Some of the greatest swordsmen that ever graced the pages of books, Fawford and the Great Mouser, faced fell foes and performed dire deeds in Linkmar and in the world of Nawan beyond. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himbar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Fritz Leiber's Swords Against Death. This is book two in the saga of Fawford and the Grey Mouser, a follow-up to the genesis of the duo in Swords and Devil Tree, which I have previously reviewed and will link here. I'll be doing a quick overview of the stories presented in this book and my quick thoughts on the writing in general. While the first book only had three stories, this one has ten. It manages to be the same size, making these considerably smaller on average. These stories are chronological and work together as a novel better than the first book as well. They also work well separately as pulpy stories if you want to just read a story in between novels, though you may want the omnibuses for this and for the fans of omnibuses. The library does a great job of intersecting the creepy supernatural and the brave swashbuckling of our heroes. The library does also a great job of making the stakes high, and I was honestly worried about the duo's well-being on several occasions, which makes it a fitting title of Swords Against Death. The first story, The Circle Curse, starts precisely where the last story in book one, Imelt and Linkmar, left off. Fawford and the Grey Mouser, after having recently teamed up, have left the great city of Linkmar after their respective lovers of Vlana and Ivory and were killed by a mage in the employ of the Thieves' Guild. They meet the otherworldly and seemingly genderless being named Shilba of the Eyeless Face, who has a house that moves on legs reminiscent of Baba Yaga's. It's intimated that Shilba will eventually become the Grey Mouser's patron. They also meet Fawford's mystifying future patron Ngalbul of the Seven Eyes. It seems Liber wanted some things established, such as this meeting in Three Years of Samurai's Adventures. The story was written in 1970, the year Swords Against Death was first published, as it seems Liber is connecting the deeds of Fawford and the Grey Mouser into some sort of chronological coherence. It also seems he wanted them back to the great city of Lankmar after they had sworn an oath not to return at the end of Ilmed and Lankmar. While the first story definitely seemed like an introduction, things get going in the second story. It is titled The Jewels in the Forest, and it was originally titled Two Saw Adventure, and it was the very first Fawford and the Grey Mouser tale released way back in 1939 in the magazine Unknown. The story follows the duo as they are searching for gems in a very classic feeling treasure hunt. First, they must find the ancient place that they were kept, the House of Ingarndi. This tale is a little unsettling and somewhat mysterious. It really isn't that surprising that this has a first taste of Nuon and Fawford and the Grey Mouser that the work and duo went on to be legendary. I thought this one was perfect length for the plot as well. Story 3, Thieves' House, involves a magical skull and a haunted tomb not wise to plunder. In a somewhat similar premise to the last story, it quickly evolves on its own and houses a lot more intrigue and more interesting characters. I like this one the most of the first three. It was originally published in 1943. Story 4, The Bleak Shore, was published in 1940. It starts with a duo in the Silver Eel Tavern, Dicing and chatting when seemingly they strike up with a character who at the time seems to be death. After an odd conversation, they leave the bar unannounced under some sort of gias or curse. This story is mostly told by a third person, one of the duo's slaves recounting their journey to the bleak shore beyond every map. When we get to the climax, it all ends very rapidly. Story 5, The Howling Tower of 1941, takes place shortly after where we left the friends on the bleak shore. It's mysterious and pertains to the supernatural, it manages to be somewhat creepy and is really short and gripping. Story 6, the sunken land, finds our duo on the endless ocean attempting to get back to Lankmar. Offer catches a fish that has an oddly designed ring in its stomach, and he relates a story of similarly designed jewelry among his people, supposedly coming from Simorgia, a kind of Atlantis in the place behind the title of the story. The story was eerie and reminded me some of Clark Ashton Smith's writing, so it focused largely on the towering northerner Fawford for those who prefer him. Story 7, The Seven Black Priests, starts from the point of view of a character who is observing Fawford and the Grey Mouser. Hearing his thoughts as they rolled across his mind and the page was really satisfying, and the transition to focus on the duo was done flawlessly. This transition reminded me of the story Redemption by Elaine Cunningham that is found in the Realms of War anthology. The story is from 1953 and it involves people at the jungles of Klesh, seemingly on the other side of the world. These people are priests and they worship a god that is sort of mysterious and gross in a lovecrafting sense, but also connected in its domain to the earth, Nawan itself. The ending was somewhat abrupt as seems to be a library style, but it was satisfying and he doesn't waste time by adding fluff. 
Story 8, Claws from the Night, is originally published as Dark Vengeance in 1951. The duo is finally back in Lankmar, where a fear has settled on the city, and where robbery of women for their jewels has become more commonplace. Somehow, birds seem to be involved and mayhap a deity of fowl. This was one of my favorites and had a lot of moving parts, a lot of intrigue, and honestly, I would really like to read more about the characters that we got in this story. Story 9, The Price of Paintings, starts off interestingly. Fawford and the Grey Mouser steal a house to live in. Shield of the Eyeless Face also shows back up since the first story. The story focuses a bit more on Grey Mouser rather than Fawford. This involves rash oaths and lucky escapes. It brings back up memories of their lovers of Lana and Ivrian who perished in Ilmet and Linkmar. It was originally published in 1970. Story 10, The Bazaar of the Bazaar, is from 1963. This one also involves tasks set on the duo by their respective otherworldly majorly patrons. A group of merchants known as the Devourers have arrived from another universe to uh, sell trash and enslave the world. Of the 10 stories, this one was my least favorite. It's just kind of out there and odd, though there is some humor between the Prolix and Galble and the pithy Shielba that I did enjoy reading. Overall, this isn't even a bad place to start with the Fawford and Grey Mouser stories seen as they're basically all optional, and this is a better taste of the duo anyhow than Swords and Deviltry. I'm surprised how enjoyable these fantasy stories are, even though they're 50 to 80 years old. They're packed full of action, camaraderie, and banter. Liber sets a scene's tone perfectly at the start of each story. Fawford and the Grey Mouser, while extraordinary, are still very much human, as opposed to demigod-like beings popular at the time in other sword and sorcery works. Swords Against Death showed me why Liber is considered a grand master of sword and sorcery, and I'm very excited to continue with Swords in the Mist and onward. If you've read these stories, what is your favorite? Anyways, this has been Liam from Liam's Lyceum. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.